Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting Christmas Gnome and I'm sipping on some hot cocoa. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, fire red, Mars black, green oxide, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, and deep yellow. And of course you can switch up these colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk, a small piece of white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing, and then I have two brushes. I have a one inch wide flat bristle brush and a number six round synthetic brush, and I'll refer to these as small and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we're going to paint our background. I'm going to be using my large brush. The colors I'm using are blue, brown, and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a nice soft We'll call it dusty wintry blue and I'm going to be using that for the majority of my background. I'm going to have it darker at the top and the bottom and then we'll get it to go a little bit lighter in the middle. So I'm going to pre-mix myself the, the custom color that I want which I've magically done off camera and I'll show you how to get there. So this is the blue that I'm going for. How I got to that was I used about um, equal parts of blue and brown and then just a little bit of white and I spun them together. So yours might turn out a little bit bluer or a little bit browner or a little bit lighter or a little bit darker. You can always, once you've mixed it together, if it doesn't turn out exactly as you had planned, you can always just adjust it with adding more blue or more brown or more white or whatever works out for you. So once you've got your custom blue, what I'm going to do is I'm loading up my brush and I'm going to be applying it to the top and the bottom of my canvas. I'm going to come down, I would say about a third of the way down my canvas, and then I'll come about a third of the way up my canvas with this color, and then we'll get the, uh, it to go lighter in the middle of the canvas. So that's good at the top. Now I'm going to go ahead and do it at the bottom, and I'm just going left to right. I'm not doing any fancy brush stroke here. This is um, a good coverage type of color, which means it's got a lot of opacity in it, so you won't necessarily detect those brush marks, so it's going to give you a nice good coverage. So once I get to about here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding white to my equation. So without washing my brush, I just picked up some white, and I'm going to get this to blend in in through here. And I'll do the same thing up on this area in through here. So just getting it to blend in with that upper region and then at the upper and the lower region, going back and forth, left to right to get it to blend the way that I want. And then I'll pick up white again to get this center area. So what we're doing is we're in essence kind of creating this light zone in the middle of the canvas, which will add to the atmospheric dimension of the overall painting. So this is just a little trick to give you a background that is not just a flat color. This, again, 
It's great for like landscapes and things of that nature where you want to add some kind of dimension to the overall landscape without having to do too much work. So this is what I'm going to be doing for this. And then we're going to be using this same brush for the next step. So you can, once you've got this done, you can wash and dry your brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting some distant trees. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm going to use are my custom blue, black, and white. And I do recommend that before you start the step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry. Or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some out of focus snowy pine trees. And how I'm going to do this, I don't want them to really be, I don't want them to steal the show. I don't want them to be overpowering in their, uh, in their contrast. So I'm just going to make a real soft muted color for them. And I'm going to give them their iconic kind of tall triangular shape. And then we're going to add a little bit of the essence of snow on top of them. So how I'm going to start this is I'm going to be using my background blue and I'm going to add a teeny tiny bit of black paint to it. So I'm making it just a little bit darker than the than that background blue. I'm going to use this as my starting point for the um, for the color scheme of these trees. So that's about as dark as I'm going to be making it go. And you don't need a lot of paint. So just a little bit on your brush. I'm going to give myself kind of a road map where I want them to go. So if this is about halfway down my canvas, I'm going to come maybe about two to three inches down below that. And I'm going to give myself this really soft kind of bottom edge to where my trees are going to go. I'm going to not go straight across. I'm going to bring it up a little bit and I'm going to go a little bit past my maybe my halfway point. So something like this. I'm hardly touching my canvas at all right now. Just giving myself this real soft bottom to it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a couple of little maybe tips of where I want the tops of the trees to go. So I'm going to go maybe if this is about halfway my canvas, I'm going to go over maybe around here. So that'll be a tip. This will be a tip. I'll have one over here. This just helps me to kind of um, gather my thoughts and not go too extreme with what um, with making too many trees. <laughs> Sometimes my brain just makes me do too much when I don't need to do as much. So I've got like six trees or something like that. And then what I'm going to do is in a very loose way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the tips of these trees and just give myself, I'm going to kind of tap down in this triangular type of way. I'm not going to do them all this dark. I'm just going to do maybe two of them this dark and then I'm going to progressively get lighter with the colors and I'm going to make them come towards the foreground or to closer to us. I think maybe I'll make this one in here the same darkness. So I'm just kind of tapping my brush, giving myself this um, triangular type of shape. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my background uh, blue with my dirty brush. So this is going to give me a little bit lighter of a tone and I can make the trees kind of look like they're in front of each other. So I'm going to start over here and I'm going to start up at the top. I might need to make that top a little bit darker as it is in front of or it's uh, starting up here, but I'm going to put snow on it too. So I don't necessarily need to go lighter, but you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute here. So I've got this one on in through here. I'm going to pick up some more of my background blue on my dirty brush. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a tree here. This is where I get to start overlapping them. So I'm overlapping this one a little bit and you can see it's a real subtle color. I'm going to do this one in through here. And again, they don't have to be really symmetrical. You can make one side a little bit bigger than the other side. You can make, again, make them overlap like I'm doing in through here. I'm going to have this other one right in through here. And now I'm going to start adding white onto my dirty brush. So I'm going to, without washing my brush, I'm picking up just a teeny tiny bit of white paint. 
so little that I'll probably, I'm just gonna tap it off on my paper towel. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add just the little bit of essence of snow on top of these trees. So again, white on my dirty brush and just kind of tapping just the little edges, little essence of some snow on these trees. The paint is still wet underneath, so it is allowing for me to kind of intermingle these colors together. And again, I want this to look out of focus. So I'm not, I don't want it to steal the show. I'm just really kind of lightly tapping in these um, little hints of snow on the on the edges of it and you can make it look messy you can make it look nice and neat whatever needs to work for your own um, painterly style but this is looking pretty good to me I'm gonna be um, using my piece of chalk for the next step so once you've got your distant trees done you can fiddle with them all you want and then you can put this large brush away take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline for our sled, our gnome, and its present bag or gift bag. I'm gonna be using my chalk. I do recommend again that your canvas is dry before you start this step because it's always easier to draw on a dry canvas than it is to draw on a wet canvas. <laughs> so I'm gonna be guiding you through a series of markers. We're gonna connect those markers. We're just going for some nice basic shapes that we'll be able to utilize during the painting process. And this is just intended to be a nice, fun, whimsical kind of image. Um, so if yours ends up a little bit different than mine, it's all right. It's just a fun holiday gnome. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first uh, draw the exterior frame to my sled. So if you find yourself about the halfway point, left to right, center, uh, top to bottom, mine's, I would say, right somewhere about here. I'm gonna go to the right, almost about halfway between here and the edge of my canvas. So somewhere about here, and then I'm gonna drop it just a little bit. This is gonna be the tip of my um, sled edge. And then I'm gonna do uh, the tip down at the bottom left as well. So I'm gonna come up from the bottom left maybe about three inches, and then I'm gonna come in maybe about four inches, somewhere in through here. And then I'm gonna connect these two. I'm gonna have a little swirl on either side. So I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna kind of bring it in this little swirl. I'm gonna come up here in a diagonal way, and then I'm gonna whip it around like this and bring it back to this little dot in through there. And again, yours doesn't have to be exactly as mine. And these will get wider when we paint them in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down about a quarter of the way down this side of the sled. So somewhere about here. And then I'll come up here, maybe about a quarter to a third of the way, somewhere in through here. And then I'm going to connect these two with um, what will be the bottom kind of brace to or the part that my gnome is gonna sit on. <laughs> so something like this will do that for me. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start building my gnome. So I'm gonna do the gnome butt and leg and arm first and then we'll build our way up. So I'm gonna come up from here, maybe about an inch, inch and a half, make myself a mark, do the same thing over here, about an inch, inch and a half. This is gonna represent the leg of my gnome and then this area will represent the rear end. So for the leg, I'm gonna bring this up kind of in a diagonal type of way, about an inch, and then I'm gonna connect here to here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swoop this around so I have a big old butt for my, <laughs> for my gnome, something like this, and then I will get this to give myself a nice line in through there. So this is gonna just represent the rear end and the, and the leg, and yours can be bigger or smaller than mine, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna put a little foot on here, so I'm gonna just kinda come out from the ankle of the pants, give myself a cute little gnome foot like that, and again, it'll all work out when we put the details on. This is actually gonna grow a little bit. We're gonna have a nice fluffy white cuff on it too later. So then I'm gonna put my mitten on. I'm gonna bring my mitten somewhere in this vicinity, giving myself kind of a bigger part here and a little part here. I'm gonna just bring this back into the pants like this, and then I'm just gonna give myself a little section here. This is all gonna be hair, so we just need a little section of the arm to show in through here, and that'll work. 
And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my nose on. So I'm gonna bring my nose a little bit higher than this corner here. So my nose is gonna start right about here. I'm just gonna give myself a little circle that's maybe about an inch and a half wide by an inch and a half tall. Yours could be bigger or smaller, whatever works for you. <laughs> now I'm gonna put a big old hat on. So I want my hat to be like flopping in the wind and like the, the trajectory of the sled is making it wave and stuff. So what I'm first gonna do is put a little bit of a rim on the hat just so I can have um, somewhere to start. So I'm gonna start a little bit down my nose on either side and then I'll just kind of give myself a little rim to my hat. I've got my gnome kind of with his head tilted a little bit, so that's why I've got it more towards the left. And then I'm just gonna kind of take this in from here a little bit, give myself a big old wavy line, bringing it out to the edge here where I'm gonna put a little pom-pom into it, and then I'll come up from here a little bit and then just give myself a big old wavy line that way, and that gives me lots of movement and shape to my hat. This interior area is all gonna be beard. So I don't really need to even do anything to it, but if, because it's gonna have lots of pieces of hair that are gonna have edges, um, really thin edges, but if you felt it necessary to just give yourself a little bit of an outline where you want that hair to go, you could certainly just kind of give yourself these really wispy, almost um, carefree, type of um, lines that will just guide you into the area that you want that hair to be. Then I'm gonna make myself a little bag that he's pulling. So I'm gonna come up from here, maybe about an inch and a half to two inches, probably right about the same height as the bottom of here, right in through here. Then I'm gonna come up about halfway up my canvas, so somewhere in through here. This will be the top of the main part I'm gonna connect these two with a big old kind of bumpy bag kind of thing, something like that. Then I'll put a little um, area where I want my ribbon to go. And then I'll just put the little tippy top of the bag, something like that. I also need a little sled carrying the bag so I can just kind of give myself a little marker like that for my sled. And that's all we're gonna be doing for this step. We're gonna use our small brush for the next step. So you can make any little adjustments that you, oh wait, nope, I take it back. Hold that thought. We need the other, the other side to um, the sled. So I did it this way so we could have, we didn't have to draw in front of this one. Sorry about that. <laughs> we need the other side to the sled. So I just need to imagine this a little bit smaller and a little bit farther away. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect this back part right in through here with a diagonal. This is gonna have a similar curve to that. And then I can take this and just bring it over to the left, give myself a similar curve to this, like this over the edge, something like that. And I'll do the same thing over here. This is gonna come behind the foot and it's gonna be the same trajectory as this, only it's gonna be a little bit smaller. It's gonna kind of cross over and go like that. So something like that, sorry about that. <laughs> Sometimes I get too excited to go on to the next step, so this, this'll this work now. So now you can put your chalk away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat for our gnome, its sled, and the bag. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I might have said medium. I don't have a medium brush today, so it's definitely just small and large. So it's a small brush. I'm gonna use that, and I'm gonna be using black, green, brown, yellow, white, and red. I'm gonna use all the colors on my palette. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna color in a couple of areas with green. So I'm gonna be doing my bag with green paint. So I'm not doing anything fancy on this step. Even this little area where I've got my, um, my sled kind of overlapping, if you bump into it, don't worry. I'm gonna, when I do the base coat for the sled part, I'll be able to color that part in. And I'm just kind of getting this all green. There's gonna be areas that are see-through or transparent depending on what type of paint that you're using. So if your paint looks a little streaky and is not um, covering as well as you want, don't worry because we have lots of steps to go that will help with that, um, with that coverage. I'm gonna do his clothing with this green paint as well. So just bringing this color all the way 
to my chalk marks. We're going to have, um, he's got a green sleeve, so I'm going to put some green paint in this little section in through here, and then green all the way on his clothing. And again, I'm not concerned about streakiness in my paint right now. I'm really just concerned about giving myself a good coverage. So I'm going to wash in, or a, um, just a first coverage. It doesn't even have to be good. I'm washing dry my brush. I'm going to now pick up some black paint. I'm going to do um, black areas. So my tie over here is going to get a base coat of black paint. So just going right on my chalk mark. And again, I'm not doing anything fancy, just kind of giving myself a base coat. So when I go to color in these areas, I've got something that is conducive to what what I'm going to be doing with them. So this black base works great when I have red um, that I'm going to be using later. So I'm going to be using black as my base for my mittens, my hat, my little tie, my shoes. So black is great when you're doing maybe something that you want to have um, a gray tone to it or like I'm using it with black or um, with red for my um, my cloth areas so I definitely I dig using black for a base coat on lots of different colors because it provides a real easy way to get some great dimension in it and of course your boots can be whatever kind of little cute boots that you want them to be <laughs> so that's that I'm gonna do my hat is gonna be a base coat of black as well I'm gonna leave just a tiny little um, separating area between my rim and my um, and my top of my hat just so I have a uh, kind of a visual um, separation point. So when I do go to paint in those details, I'll have a little bit of information to work from. So I just kind of use a little bit less paint on my brush so I can leave a little bit of that outline there. And then again, just kind of painting this in. No special brush stroke. If your hat morphs into a little bit different of a shape during this process, so be it, <laughs> which mine will definitely typically do as I'm coloring it in, especially when I know that the shape is not entirely important to the, um, you know, to the final detail work. This is just something that a uh, nice whimsical painting. I don't need it to look perfect. Perfection is a difficult task to to accomplish. So we just go for fun and enjoying the process. So that's good. I don't need anything else colored with black, so I'm going to wash and dry my brush. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the base coat for my sleds. So I'm going to just go for a tan color, and I pre-mixed myself a tan so you can see where I'm how I got to it. So I used white, yellow, and brown. Just going for a nice tan color. And then once I've accomplished or got the, the color of my choice, yours can be lighter or darker than mine, whatever works for you is totally fine. Maybe you want a different color sled. I'm gonna go ahead and paint this in. So I'm gonna make the, these pieces wider than my chalk mark. So when I do this, I am going to push my brush a little bit firmer so I can have a line that's maybe about a, a quarter of an inch wide, something like that, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, I'm going to go ahead and do this little area in through here. I'm going to color in this whole area with this tan color um, so it looks like it's a nice solid piece so our um, little gnome doesn't fall off. We don't want him to fall off. We want him to have a nice sturdy, sturdy sled. So over here, going to kind of push my brush pretty hard to get to here. And then on this side over here, maybe I push it a little bit Firmer. And I think I'm going to pull this little tip up just a little bit. There we go. And of course, you can make any modifications that you want as you're going through this process. So if you find an area where, where you feel like your chalk mark was not entirely in the perfect position or the position that you necessarily thought it should be, you can always modify it. I'm going to go ahead and give myself a nice thick kind of... Um, piece in here. So again, just pushing my brush pretty darn hard so I can get a nice solid representation of that piece of the sled. And then over here, I'm going to do the back side first. So oops, I just dropped some paint on my hand <laughs> as I always do. My brush is not cooperating here. There we go. I had a little bit too much paint on my brush. So I'm going to start right here and maybe bring this 
like this and into his foot because that's where it's going to go on the other side of his foot. So if you bump into the foot, no worries. And then I'm going to take this one. I think this one's going to cross over right about here. So I'm moving my chalk mark just a little bit because I feel it should be. And then just push my brush pretty darn hard to make sure that this is nice and solid and I've got a good um, thickness to it. And if this front side looks wider than the back side, that's pretty good. That's what's going to make it look like you've got some good dimension to it. And we'll be adding highlights and shadows, so if yours isn't as wide as mine or you feel like yours needs a little bit more work and a little bit, you've got that opportunity. I'm going to now make myself a little color for my gnome nose. So I'm gonna use that tan. I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of red and a tiny bit of yellow to it. So I'm making myself a little gnome nose skin color, something like that. So just I used my tan and added a tiny bit of red and yellow to it and I'm gonna give myself a little skin colored nose in through here. And again, yours doesn't have to be exactly as mine. You can make it any color that you want. Then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna do the rest with gray. We're putting on the first layer to the hair. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of black and white. So I'm gonna take a white and a little bit of black and just make myself a gray color, medium gray doesn't have to be anything fancy. I'm not doing a lot of detail on the hair right now. I just wanna give myself a little base coat in this area to work from later. So I'm not even gonna do anything fancy, just bringing this right to my nose, right to my hat, right to that arm. Oh, I missed a little green spot and through there. I'm not even worried about that. <laughs> There's gonna be some white fluff around there or I've got my second coat, so I'm okay with that little spot that I missed in through here, just bringing this back. And once I get past this rear end, I can start to just bring this out in these little wispy kind of motions kind of, you know, taking on a little bit of the footprint that I did with my chalk. But again, I'm not going for the detail right now. I'm just going for a base coat that I'll be able to work from later. So this will just start the movement of the ends of that hair like that. And then I need a little spot over here. And then when you've got this done, we're actually going to be using our large brush for the next step. This side, I'm just kind of flipping these little pieces over here. And again, not going for full coverage or anything like that right now, just something to work from. And then I'm gonna put this brush away, take out my large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our snow. I'm gonna use my large brush when I indicate snow, I'm really talking about we're gonna finish the ground and we're also gonna put this big spray of snow coming up, which will indicate how fast our gnome is traveling. <laughs> like he's, he's, I don't know if he's ready to take off or he, I think he is. He seems like he's lifting off the ground to me. So he, and he's pushing the snow way up in the air. So there's gonna be a lot of movement in our snow. So first I wanna make it, make it look a little bit more dimensional. So I'm gonna add a bit of a shadow underneath my gnome, um, uh, underneath the sled, and then we'll add some, some, texture to the rest of the snow. We're gonna add a little bit of what appears to be kind of a hill in through here, and then we'll add our spray going up. So this is one of those steps, especially in the beginning, we're not gonna need a lot of paint. We're probably gonna bump into some of our framework for the sled, which is okay, because we're gonna be painting another layer on that sled. Um, but I wanted to put the sled in first so we could have the idea of where it was sitting in order to do this shadow underneath that we're gonna do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a teeny tiny bit of black paint on my brush and I'm gonna put a little bit of water on my brush. I'm gonna dip my brush a tiny bit in my water and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap it off on my paper towel. So what I have is a very little bit of fluid black on my brush right now and I'm gonna rub it in underneath this sled to give it the information I, I want to tell the viewer that this sled is maybe lifting off. So I'm gonna put some darkness right underneath the sled like this, just kind of tapping it in. I want it to look like there's um, some texture to it too. And if you feel like you have a lot too much 
water on your brush like I feel like I'm almost too much so I just kind of squished it out on my paper towel and picked up a little bit more black just so I could get a little bit more darkness in through here so anyways so I'm gonna um, bring it back here like maybe there's some treads or tracks from the sled as well I'm just bringing some darkness underneath here and then right about right past as I get past the seated part I'm going to start um, disconnecting it from the frame of my sled and I'm going to give a little silhouette of sorts or shadow of those um, of the front I don't know what they're called the front part of the sled we're just going to call it the front part of the sled I, um, I don't know what they're called the tracks of the no I don't know Anyways, so this is good. It's just giving you the little information that this is maybe is the shadow of those, the front part of the sled, something like that. So now that I've got that on there, I want this shadow to look like it's in the snow. So I'm going to pick up some of my snow color or the background color with my dirty brush. So I have my dirty brush plus a little bit of that snow color, and I'm just going to kind of rub it in around here so this is going to give the snow a little bit more of a grayer tone around this shadow and it's also going to allow us to have a little bit more dimension in the snow and put a little bit of it back in through here and again i'm not afraid to bump into my other objects at this point i'm really just more concerned about giving my snow some dimension i'm going to bring this up in through here like this might be a little bit of a hill of sorts so something like this i'm going to pick up a little bit more of my snow color so i can make sure that i have good coverage around here i'm going to add some a uh, little bit of lightness to it in a minute but right now just making sure that i've got some some good texture in my snow before I start adding the lightness. That's looking pretty good. So now I'm gonna start picking up without washing my brush, a teeny tiny bit of white paint. So just dab it off on your paper towel. Less is more. You can always add more later, but it's kind of tough to reverse it once you've got it on the canvas. So just a little bit of white. I'm kind of scrubbing it back and forth, giving myself this soft, um, blended kind of look to it without overdoing it uh, maybe we put a little bit back in through here and then maybe a touch kind of coming up in through here and I'm doing it this way so it doesn't turn all the way white because I want my spray of snow to be kind of the star of the snow show <laughs> so I'm really concentrating on not making this too too white so that's looking pretty good to me so now I'm going to start um, and I'm intermingling it with that shadow so the shadow still shows I think I'm going to go a little darker underneath the sled I just picked up a tiny bit more black I want this to really have a good shadow under here so I didn't wash my brush I didn't even add more water to it just a teeny tiny bit of black and rubbed it off on my um, paper towel I just want to make sure that I have enough shadow underneath here so I keep adding I'd re again I'd rather whoops I had white on my brush hold on one second I can wash and dry my brush I don't want white right now I want a little bit of black so I'm I really want this shadow under here to be pretty evident so I was a little too cautious I can see initially so now I'm just going back in and added a, a little bit more darkness so if that happens to you where you're going about it and you're like well that shadow just isn't reading enough you can always add more you know that's that's the beauty of this you can you know put it on there let it sit for a minute and if it's not as much as you want just go back and add a little bit more so that's looking a little bit better to me so now I'm going to a little bit more underneath here that shadow is always going to add some great dimension you can see I bumped into my sled which is totally fine maybe a little bit more underneath this guy just to tell the same story that's good and then because I just added black on my brush I am washing and drying it right now because I want to go into that bright white snow so I washed and dried my brush now I'm going to put that trajectory of the bright snow up and through there so I'm going to add white plus my background color so I have white plus that custom blue on my brush right now and I'm going to um, start this motion of my of my snow kind of coming up into the air in in this direction and I'm just using kind of the side or the tip 
of my brush. You could, you could use a different brush. You could use whatever kind of method that you want, but I'm starting with both of these colors so I can kind of work my way to the bright white stuff. Um, I'm gonna just put a little bit underneath here just to make it look like we've got a little bit spraying out from underneath the sled as well. And then maybe put a little bit going up here. I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel too just so I can have some real soft stuff as it's coming out these corners. And again, less is more if you, you know, you can always add more. I'm putting it in this direction so it looks like it's spraying out. Now I'm gonna pick up just white paint on my dirty brush and I'm gonna get some real bright little pops of the snow coming in through here, right up the center, so it really looks nice and bright. And once you do this, you know, let it dry, and if you're going through the process and it's, once it's dry, you wanna put more on, put more on. You don't have to just, you know, stop at this step. If you're going through the process and it's done drying and you're like, oh man, I wish I had some more snow, put more snow on there. <laughs> you don't have to stop where I stop. And then, but once you've got it done and it's nice and satisfying to you, we are gonna use our small brush for the next step. So you can put this large brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our green parts. <laughs> so this is gonna be the bag, the pants, and the shirt. So I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors I'm using are green, black, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some shadows and some highlights to give these objects form. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a little bit of black paint on my brush. I'm gonna start with the bag first. I'm gonna take my black paint, I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a dark area for the inside of the bag up in through here. So I'm just gonna give myself a real ripply kind of oval type of shape just to kind of emulate the look of this bag being open at the top. Then I'm gonna put a shadow down this side and down at the bottom. So I've got the black paint on my brush. I'm gonna really be pretty darn heavy handed uh, when I start the application for it. I know that I'm trying to emulate a, a bag with lots of ripples and bumps in it, so I'm just gonna kind of put a pretty heavy line in through there. And then I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel and rub it up into or towards the green paint, towards the center of the bag. So I have these soft edges as it's entering um, the bag area like that. Then I'm gonna pick up green paint on my dirty brush and I'm gonna get this um, shadowy area to blend up or into the green. And again, don't worry about your little um, part of the sled at this point. You'll be able to finish that up when we, when we do the details there. So I just have that green on my brush to blend into those dark black areas in through here. I think I need to bring this edge out a little bit more because I see that I've got some green out there. So just bringing this black all the way out to where I had that original footprint of it. And um, maybe we've got a little bit of this, um, maybe black and green up in through here, just a little shadow on the underside of this um, bag part right there. Then what I'm gonna do is I am washing and drying my brush and I'm just gonna finish up the bag with some green. I'll put a highlight on it in a minute, but right now I'm just gonna kind of make sure that I have good coverage, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on these two pieces over here. Once I get this to blend the way that I want to, there we go. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of black paint on my brush. Again, I'm gonna be pretty heavy handed um, where I want these shadows to be. So I want it in through here. I'm gonna want it underneath my hair up in through here and maybe down this back side of the butt in through here. So I'm, I'm gonna do this probably more smaller sections than I did on the bag because I want it to blend before it dries. So once I've got it on there, I just start rubbing the, it, it in towards the green. So I've got a nice kind of blend as it's going towards um, the inside of the of the, the section. Then I pick up green on my dirty brush, put it on this middle area, and then get it to blend 
out into that darker area. So I, in essence, what I do is I'm rubbing or overlapping the darkness. First I did the black and I blended it up into the green and then I take the green and blend it down into, into the shadow. So that gives me kind of an overlapping blend and it's a nice simple way to um, get these colors to intermingle and not um, really have to worry about that um, making those colors merge perfectly. So then I'm going to pick up a teeny tiny bit of black again. I want a nice shadow at the bottom of this leg in through here. So just getting it where it's going to meet the, um, the sled. I want a little bit underneath the arm on the top of the leg as if the arm is casting a shadow on the leg itself and then maybe a little bit up in through here where the beard would cast a shadow on the arm and then i'm gonna wipe my brush off because i feel like i have too much paint on it blend this um shadowy area into the green like that just make sure i have soft edges where it's where i want the side to blend with the green itself then I'm going to pick up my green on my dirty brush, repeat what I did in the other shadowy areas, which is getting that mid-tone of the green to blend. And here we go. I, I covered that spot that I missed earlier. So that's going to be my blend for that. And then what I'm going to do is make sure this whole center area has a good coverage of my green. And now I'm going to just start adding my little highlights. I don't have much for highlights to do. I'm going to do a little bit on the bag. So I'm going to come back here on the bag. I have green on my brush, so I'm going to use green and white on my brush. I'm going to put a big highlight over here on the left hand side of the bag and I'll put a little bit up in through here, the little top edge of the bag. Again, just going for something that's gonna give it a little bit of dimension. So this green and white, I start rubbing it down into the main area of the bag. So I'm really just giving it a lighter tone over here on the left-hand side. My green is still a little bit wet in that center. If yours wasn't, you could certainly just pick up a little bit more green on your brush to accomplish this. And then up in through here, I'll just kind of maneuver that white around. I'm gonna add a tiny bit more green to it so it's not so white. So there we go. The, the white and the green together is gonna to make you just a nice lighter version of green. So it is nice and believable. And wherever you want that bag to pop out, if you want there to look like there's a big present sitting in here, you could put a little bit lighter of an area. So I just picked up that white again with my dirty brush and that's gonna get a nice bubbly area to make it look like there's lots of presents in there. So that's good. And then on the this over here, I don't really feel like I need a whole lot of highlight, maybe a tiny bit. I don't know, on the the leg in through here, not on the butt because it's going to be all shadowed by the hair. So maybe just a little bit in through here, which I don't even think was necessary, but um, if you feel it's necessary, go for it. And then we're going to use the same small brush for the next step. So once you've got all your green areas done, you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our sled. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors I'm gonna use are tan, brown, black, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add highlights and shadows to my sled portion, and then we're gonna add some handles or reins for our gnome to hold on to, and we also need to add a little bit of a connector for this part of the sled to be pulling the the presents. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with my um, small brush. I'm gonna put black and brown on my brush. It's more brown than it is black. Um, so I put a lot of brown and then just a teeny tiny bit of black on the tip. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add shadows at the bottom of each one of these pieces. And I'm also gonna add some shadow back here. So I'm gonna start with the bottom edges of my pieces. So again, black and brown is what I've got on my brush. And I'm really just gonna look to give it a you know, a soft kind of shadow. When I do these back pieces, I'm going to skip over the front piece. So I've got my black and my brown and I reload my brush and I'm doing the bottom side. So this is the bottom side and then this is the bottom side. I, I skip that, then I can go, go and do this. So I want to make sure that one looks like it's behind it. So I'm doing the bottom side like that 
and then I can do the bottom side here. So black and brown are on my brush right now. And I'm just kind of doing these long kind of continual motions. If you feel that, you know, you've got it too black or too much, we're going to do a highlight in a minute that will help this to blend in with the um, light parts of the sled. So don't worry if you didn't get it perfect or if it's too dark or too light or something like that because we'll correct it in a second. I'm going to put a nice dark area at the bottom here. So again, just black and brown are on my brush, just giving myself a nice shadowy area underneath there. Black and brown. I just keep reloading with black and brown. I'm going to do um, this back side of this one or the bottom side of this one like that. Going to do it up in through here like that. Just kind of giving myself a little shadow on the bottom part of that object. Oh, that grew a little bit. <laughs> Something like that. Maybe a little bit on this tip like that. I got to do this area back here. So back here I'm just going to start with the remnants that I have on my brush. I'm not adding any more, just using the little remnants. So I'm going to go underneath his rear end like this and then just kind of picturing this side to just be you know maybe shadowed by his rear end <laughs> so it might be the whole thing might have a a bit of a shadow on it somewhere in in here and then just kind of pulling this up i'm not doing too much in through there just gonna using my intuition to tell me where i think it should be nice and dark maybe a little bit darker down right at the bottom bottom as it's kind of curling under the sled something like that and then i'm going to wash and dry my brush and i'm going to put tan plus white on my brush to do the highlights so i've got tan plus white on my brush at the same time i'm going to kick myself a little highlight up in through here and then this is going to kind of come back on the top side of that i need a little bit more tan on my brush just so i can get this to blend in and this is where you can you know get it to blend in with that shadow a little bit more if you feel like you need it to go lighter or darker this is the time to do it so again tan plus white is on my brush to get this little bit of a highlight in through there a little highlight on this side in through here and again i'm just looking you know more along the top side is where I want it to be the brighter. And I'm thinking that this is like a wood kind of texture. So I'm really not looking for it to be super smooth or have a perfect gradient. I'm just looking to have it brown or tan and maybe a little bit lighter on the top than it is on the bottom. So, you know, if I can just utilize that thought process, throughout um, the making of this that just helps to steer me in the right direction and lets me be a little bit more carefree and not needing to have it really um, that perfect just kind of adding these light streaks of highlights I'm going to do the same thing still just tan and white giving myself a little highlight up there little highlight there maybe a little bit in through here and then maybe a little bit down this side and then you can fiddle with it all you want. If you've done something that was too much, just bring back some of your tan. If you want more of a shadow, put more of a shadow. It's going to be totally up to you. And then once you've got this done, we're going to, you could even, as I'm noticing, I got a little couple pieces of snow in front of here. If you wanted to, you could um, put some of that snow in front of the sled. Like I just picked up a little bit of white. You could totally splash up a little couple pieces of snow in front of the sled as well. That'll add more fun dimension to it. And then we're going to use this same small brush. Oh, I forgot my little ties. So wash and dry my brush. I'm going to put my little ties on here. So a little bit of black on my brush. All I need to do is give a little connector piece. So I'm going to give a little round kind of tie around here, a little round tie around here. Again, this is just black paint and then these little connector pieces. So these two go together and then this one over on the other side, maybe I would just see a little tiny piece of it. It's going to go behind that one and I don't even have the other um, side to the sleds showing on this. So I just kind of bring this back to here and then I've got, I'll put a little highlight on it in a minute, but right now I'm going to put the 
rains over here. So again, just a little bit of black on my brush. Gonna give myself a little circular kind of um, tie here. So I bring it right around those sides like that. And then I can't see it on the other side because it's strategically placed right behind there. <laughs> and then I need some little reins to go. So I'm going to bring it right in through here. Maybe this one kind of, because I know that this is hidden behind there. I'm going to have that piece of um, rain coming up from that little spot. I just put more paint on my brush with a little bit of water so I can get these little skinny lines like this and I'm going to give these movement as if they are waggling in the air like that and then this one I'm going to have kind of coming up over like this and maybe waggling a little bit and coming back down to there. Now I'm going to just put a tiny bit of white paint on my brush to give these a little bit of a highlight so a itty bitty bit of white paint on my brush just kind of giving myself a little tiny highlight on here so we've got a little dimension and the black is still going to be wet so that's going to give you a little bit of a um, blend of sorts or a nice strategic kind of um, variation in colors and then maybe just a couple of little streaks up on these ones and now you can wash and dry this brush in preparation for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our red parts and our fluffy parts. <laughs> I'm using my small brush. So the red parts are the hat, the mitten, and the ribbon. And the fluffy parts are the pom-pom and the, um, the edge to the sleeve and the edge to the pants in through here. So I'm gonna do my red parts first. I'm gonna start with my ribbon. I'm gonna load my brush with red paint and I'm just going to accentuate the, um, the ribbon with this red paint. I'm going to leave a little bit of my black showing strategically. So I'm going to just kind of give myself a little bit of a red area in through there. I'm going to put a little red on this part in through here. And those black areas that I've left now look like little shadows. So I have a little shadow at the bottom. I have a little shadow in here where the knot is and a little shadow here where the edge of the ribbon goes into the knot. I'm going to use that same um, red paint over on my glove. So I'm going to take this. I want it to look nice and textured. So I'm actually going to be using this dotting stippling technique to get some textured um, look to it. So again, just dotting and I'm going past my edges. So that makes it look like it's got a little bit of fluff on the um, on the edges of it and then as I come back towards the wrist I'm going to let myself kind of run out of paint so it'll get darker and darker as it comes down towards this wrist area which will give it a lot of dimension. I'm going to let that set for a minute while I go do the same exercise on the hat. So I've got my red paint I'm going to be dotting it but I'm going to be leaving some dark areas that are going to show um, make it look like it's going into the shadows. My brighter area is going to be on the top side of it to make it look like it's round and it's closer to our light source, which is the sky. So I've got my red paint nice and heavy. And I, as it gets towards the nose, I will uh, leave some of that black showing. This is where I can get rid of my um, little line that I had left for myself. And then I'm going to just kind of Keep dotting where it, where the red paint is heavier is where it's going to be brighter and where I have used less rest red paint is where it's going to look a little bit darker because the red is nice and transparent or translucent so it allows me to get these tonal changes within that one area because I have that black behind it. So I'm going to do the same thing up and through here. So real heavy up at the top and then wherever I want there to be some brightness I'm going to use a lot of that red. I'm just kind of dotting with the tip or the side of my brush to get these real heavy spots in like this. I'm not going to be doing the pom-pom part that's going to be in a second and then I'm just going to let my brush kind of run out of paint as I'm coming over towards this left hand side and again that's going to help me to add that dimensional element to it. It's going to make this red look like it's getting darker and darker as it's going towards the bottom side of the hat. 
and this will tell the viewer that this is the top over here and this is the bottom down here and then those dark spots in between will make it look like there's little creases in the hat. And now that I've got that done, I'm gonna add little highlights to these red areas. So I'm not gonna wash my brush and just picking up a teeny tiny bit of white paint and I'm just gonna go and strategically add a couple of little pops of highlights in through here. On my mittens, I'm gonna be dotting. So a teeny tiny bit of white paint on my dirty brush. I'm just gonna kind of dot where I want it to pop out the most. So that would be somewhere in through here, maybe that thumb area a little bit. And if you felt it wasn't red enough, you could just let it dry for a minute and then add another layer of that red. Just picking up some more white paint. I really want this to be pretty bright up in through here. So I'm adding quite a bit on top of my wet red, which is making a lighter version of it. A lot of it right here on the tip right here. Make that really look like it's the front and the top and then maybe just kind of sporadically put some in through here. And then once I've got that done, it will look a little bit different when it dries. So you, I would recommend you wait until it dries before you um, make your final decision if you want to add more or not onto it because it will definitely dry a little bit darker than it is when it's wet so you might end up wanting to do another layer on it so now that i've got that done i'm going to wash and dry my brush and i'm going to do my my um fluffy parts <laughs> so i'm going to start with white and gray on my brush so the gray that we did for the beard i've put white and gray on my brush and i'm going to just tap it in or dot it. I'm going to leave some of the darkness down at the bottom of my fluffy part. So just a little bit in through here and then really faintly tapping it with the just a teeny tiny bit of the tip of my brush. And then I'm going to pick up some white and put some real brightness up at the top. So white is at the top and then I did that like gray mixture kind of in the middle. I might add a little bit more white in a minute, but right now this is looking pretty good. I'll go to my other fluffy parts, which are my arm, the um, edge of my sleeve and the edge of my pants. So again, white plus a little bit of that gray is on my brush. I'm gonna have this in kind of a curved type of um, look. So it looks like it's going around the wrist and you can bring it right down and even in front of the pants a little bit. That'll make it look like it's extra fluffy. So something like that. I'll do the same thing on the pants. So these, I want them to look really fluffy. So I'm gonna bring it out pretty darn far. It's gonna be really close to my sleeve. And again, on the leg, when it hits the leg, I'll curve it. So it's gonna give the illusion that, that it's going around the leg. And I'm gonna bring it right down here. This I want to be a little sh shadowed down at the bottom, so not putting much down there, but I don't necessarily want the green to show through. I'm gonna put it over the edge of the pants like that. And then once I've got it on there, I'm now I'm gonna pick up some white on my dirty brush and get the top side of this to be really bright and get it to fade down into the darkness, which is the bottom side of it. So keep picking up a little bit more white so I can get it as bright as I want. And because I'm tapping it, it's gonna give it, or with the edge of my brush, it's gonna give it some nice texture and make it look nice and fluffy. And then I'll do the same thing on here. And then again, I would just suggest that you let it dry. And if you wanna do any additional little fiddles to it, feel free to do so. Um, we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our nose, our boot, and our beard. I'm gonna, or hair, beard hair. <laughs> I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors I'm gonna use are my skin tone, black, brown, and white. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So I'm gonna start with my nose first. I want the lightest part of my nose to be over here because I want it to look like it's, you know, my gnome's kind of going in that direction and the light source is up there or up in the sky. So I, don't want, I want it brightest over here. So I'm gonna add a shadow in this bottom left area and then I'm gonna add highlight up in the top right. So I'm gonna put a teeny tiny bit of black and brown on my brush, just a teeny tiny bit on the edge. I'm going to get this whole side where it's going to meet the, um, I almost called it fur, the hair 
of the gnome and where it meets the hat up in through here, I'm going to get this nice and dark. So I'm gently rubbing it in so it kind of blends in with both areas, the beard area and the nose area. Now I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of brown and my skin color. So brown and my skin color is what I'm going to use to work my way towards the lighter side of the nose. So this is brown and my skin color and I'm just working my way towards the lighter part of the nose. Now I'm, I wiped my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up my skin tone to make sure I have good coverage on the full, on the rest of the nose. Now I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white paint on my dirty brush and I'm gonna get this light part over here on the right hand side. It doesn't necessarily have to be right along the edge of that right hand side. You can have your brightest part a little bit in, but if you can get it to kind of blend in with the rest of the nose, that's gonna give it its roundedness. So even if you don't get it as light as you want on that first go around, the, the highlight as light as you want, you can just build your way to the brightness. Like that's not bright enough for me, so I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit more white paint and I just kind of keep building it until I feel like I've got enough brightness on there and I've got it kind of blended out as much as I want it to be blended out, but I make sure that the brightest part is gonna be where I feel that it pops out the most and it's closest to the light source. And then you just kind of keep fiddling with it until you get it where you want. And then once I've got that done, I'm gonna move on to my foot and my foot is gonna be Pretty simple because really all I need to do is just make sure my shape is the way that I want and then just add a highlight. So I washed and dried my brush. I'm going to pick up some of my black, make sure my shape is the way that I want. So I know that I had um, bumped into it with my sled a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of reshape that. Maybe I put a little part popping out back in through here and I've got it going underneath my little fluffy part in through here. Now it's looking fine to me. I got a little chalk in through there. I can erase with some water in a bit. I'm just going to add a bit of my gray to my brush and I'm going to take it from this top side and just give myself a little highlight coming back in through here. And then I'm going to just put a little bit of white paint on my brush, give myself a little kind of sparkle up at the top of that boot. And then I'm not doing anything other than that to my boot. I just want it to look like it's bright at the top and then it's just kind of getting darker as it comes down that side. You could put laces on it, you could do whatever you want. I think I need a little more black. I, I overworked it a little bit back here, so just a little black to do that. Now I'm gonna put my beard on. So I have a nice dark tone underneath, but I think I want a little bit more shadow in this area right in through here. So when I go to put the beard on, it's gonna really have some great dimension. So I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black plus my gray. So I have black plus my gray, and I'm gonna just kind of, oh, I need a little bit more black in through here. I'm just gonna kind of make sure that I've got a little bit of darkness in through here, and I'm gonna just kind of pull, start pulling it in the direction that I want my pieces to go. This is where I'm gonna to start to overlap some of these pieces into my, um, my clothing and make sure that that really looks nice and natural. So this is just giving me a little bit of extra um, direction to the hair. I definitely wanna put some right underneath this um, area in through here, a little bit of darkness that is. So just again, this is my gray plus a touch of black. And then if you felt that you wanted it anywhere else, like a couple of darker pieces back here, feel free to do so. So now that I've got like the direction of my um, hair, I'm going to create a tan color, which will be um, building my way to the lightness of the hair. So what I did, or what I'm gonna do, and what I did here, I'm making myself a tan color. I just picked up some brown and white and made myself a little bit of a tan color. This is just gonna build my way towards the lightness of the hair. So I've got my brown or my tan color. I'm gonna use this plus my gray on my brush. So I have tan plus gray, and now I'm gonna start to um, give myself all of the information where I want this hair to go. So I'm gonna have it coming, flipping out here. It's gonna flip into my, uh, in front of my hat, 
like this. I've got a little beard area or a mustache area. This is where it's going to kind of come over in this direction. And I love working my way from the dark to the light, especially on hair, because the darkness is the pieces that you're going to that are underneath all that vibrant exterior hair. So working your way from the darkness to the lightness like this helps to build it in a nice natural way. I'm going to start adding all of my little curves and waves to the hair. So again, I've just got my brown, my tan plus my gray on my brush right now. And this is just adding all this great movement. I'm bringing it back in through here. I don't have to paint over all of the original pieces. This is just because if I did that, then I would lose some of the dimension. This is just giving myself this extra, you know, fun bit of um, layers and dimensions to it. Now I'm going to start picking up white with my tan. So white and tan is where I'm headed to get myself all these fun little bright pieces along the way. And as I build my way towards the lightness, I am taking up less real estate, which means I'm making, I'm putting the lighter stuff in less of an area than I put the darker stuff. So this way you, it again, just building its way towards the lightness. If I want something to look like it's popping out, like this little wave in through here, I can put these highlights on that part of the wave so it makes it look like it's popping out towards us. I can have all these fun little pieces coming down. If you want them to flow nicely, you can add a little bit of moisture to your brush and just have fun. It's flowy gnome hair. It doesn't have to be anything perfect. It's just, you know, the wind, the wintry wind is taking it into whatever way that, that you want it to take it. And then I'm just going to work my way over here to the right side, give myself a little couple pieces of mustache in through here, and then just bring in some fun pieces along here like they are just being whipped by the winter wind and then keep fiddling with it as much as you want. We're going to be using the same small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm going to go bottom right on this one. I'm using my small brush. I'm going to use black and my custom blue on my brush at the same time. So it color coordinates. <laughs> I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. It's your painting. You get to sign it however you'd like. And that's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a fun, whimsical, wintry image, and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime. <laughs>